If you've ever planted into what feels like lifeless ground, hard, gray, and unresponsive, you know the frustration of watching seedlings struggle or never take root at all. Gardeners often try to solve this with bags of fertilizer, only to see plants push weak growth, pests multiply, and soil degrade further. But there is a forgotten shortcut, one that ancient farmers and homesteaders used long before chemical agriculture even existed. A liquid so simple that anyone can make it at home, yet so powerful it can wake up barren soil, restore microbial life, and bring back fertility in weeks. This isn't a fertilizer in the modern sense, it's a living brew, and when added to soil it turns dead beds into thriving ecosystems again. Let's break down what this liquid is, how it works, and most importantly, how you can prepare and use it in your own garden. When gardeners describe their soil as dead, what they are really dealing with is a lack of microbial life. You know, healthy soil is just absolutely packed with life. There are literally billions of bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and actinomycetes in a single handful. These tiny organisms are constantly at work digesting organic matter, releasing minerals, building humus, and forming these amazing symbiotic partnerships with plant roots. Without these organisms, soil is really just sand, silt, and clay dust. It's structure without any real metabolism. The critical mistake that modern agriculture made was focusing on feeding plants directly with synthetic nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, basically bypassing the whole soil food web. And over time, this approach just burned out the living communities underground. The result is dirt that, well, might look intact, but honestly can't hold moisture, can't cycle nutrients, and can't resist disease. To bring soil back to life, the missing link isn't just tossing on compost or mulch, but actually reintroducing and stimulating microbes so they can restart those natural cycles. That's where these kind of forgotten liquids like fermented plant juice, compost tea, and rice wash really come into play. In Asia, Africa, and parts of South America, Farmers prepared microbial tonics long before microscopes confirmed what they were doing. They learned that soaking plant material, rice water, or even forest soil in water created a cloudy, bubbling liquid that somehow made crops greener and soils softer. These brews worked because they concentrated microbes and their byproducts into a form that could be poured directly onto soil or sprayed onto leaves. So, three traditional brews really stand out. Rice wash, which is basically the milky water you get from rinsing uncooked rice, contains lactic acid bacteria that quickly colonize soil and help suppress pathogens. Fermented plant juice made from fast-growing plants like comfrey, weeds, or even fruit peels mixed with sugar captures native microbes and growth hormones. And compost tea, prepared by soaking finished compost in aerated water, delivers a diverse inoculation of bacteria and fungi. Each method has its strengths, but they all achieve the same goal, replacing what synthetic agriculture has destroyed by feeding soil life. Rice wash is the simplest of the three and honestly a good entry point for gardeners. Begin by taking one cup of uncooked rice and rinsing it gently in two to three cups of clean water. So the goal here is to release starches into the water without fully washing the rice clean. You want that starchy water, not just clear water, you know? The resulting cloudy liquid is then left loosely covered at room temperature for like two to three days. This part is all about patience. During this time, lactic acid bacteria present on the rice multiply in the water creating a slightly sour-smelling liquid with a thin film at the top. It's pretty fascinating how nature does its thing, right? At this stage, the liquid can be diluted at a ratio of 1 part rice wash to 10 parts water and applied directly to the soil around plants. The microbes help jumpstart decomposition, feed existing fungi, and create an environment where beneficial bacteria outcompete harmful ones. Fermented plant juice, 
often shortened as FPJ, captures the vitality of rapidly growing plants and makes it available to both microbes and crops. To make it, harvest about 1 kilogram of vigorous plant material. Examples include young comfrey leaves, grass tips, or even weeds like nettle or purslane. Then chop the material and place it in a clean bucket. Mix it with about 500 grams of brown sugar or molasses, which draws out plant juices and feeds the fermenting microbes. Press the mixture down, cover it with a breathable cloth and let it sit for 5 to 7 days. During fermentation, lactic acid bacteria, yeasts, and wild microbes digest the sugars and release enzymes, plant hormones, and amino acids. What you get is a dark, sweet-smelling liquid that can be strained and stored. In the garden, dilute this FPJ at a ratio of 1 part liquid to 20 parts water. Apply it as a soil drench or foliar spray during the active growing season. Gardeners often notice that plants treated with FPJ show stronger leaf growth, better resistance to stress, and soils around them become richer in earthworm activity. While rice wash and FPJ provide targeted microbes, compost tea delivers sheer diversity. Start with 1 kilogram of mature finished compost, dark, crumbly, and smelling earthy. Alright, so you'll want to place your compost in a mesh bag or, you know, even an old pillowcase works just fine. Then, go ahead and submerge it in about 20 liters of water. To keep those microbes alive and multiplying, add a source of oxygen by using an aquarium pump with an air stone. And, uh, don't forget to feed the brew. A spoonful of molasses will give the bacteria the energy they need. Now let this bubble for about 24 to 36 hours. The end result is a foamy brown liquid that's just packed with bacteria, fungal spores, protozoa, and nematodes. So, you want to get the most out of your compost tea? Well, apply it immediately to the soil around your plants at full strength, or you can use it as a foliar spray. Compost tea not only inoculates soil with life, but it also coats plant leaves with beneficial microbes that, honestly, make it harder for disease organisms to establish themselves. The effect of these liquids goes beyond just feeding microbes. As microbial populations increase, they begin producing glues like glomalin that bind soil particles into aggregates. These aggregates create the crumbly texture gardener's prize, full of air pockets and channels for water. Soils treated with microbial brews also become sponges, holding moisture longer and releasing it gradually to roots. Over time, organic matter breaks down into humus, the stable fraction that locks carbon into soil and resists erosion. The biggest advantage of these ancient brews is that they shift the gardener's focus from feeding plants to feeding soil. Once microbes return, soil begins to manage itself. Nutrients become available without constant inputs, pests and diseases are naturally suppressed, and water use drops. The results accumulate season after season meaning that a gardener who commits to microbial liquids sees soil fertility improve rather than decline. The forgotten liquid that brings dead soil back to life is not just one recipe, but a family of practices that reconnect us to how soil was managed for thousands of years before chemical shortcuts. By brewing rice wash fermented plant juice or compost tea, you are not adding fertilizer in the conventional sense you are reviving the living engine that makes soil fertile, resilient, and self-sustaining. If you've been struggling with lifeless ground, don't give up, and don't waste money on quick fixes that never build long-term fertility. Start small with one of these liquids, apply it consistently, and watch how your soil wakes up season by season. This is the foundation of truly sustainable gardening and it is within reach of anyone with a bucket, some plants, and a little patience. 
For more guides like this on soil revival and resilient gardening methods, subscribe to Hydrohaven and share this video with fellow gardeners who are ready to bring life back into their soil.